Hello. Welcome to Jesus for All 2, God's Word, Your Daily Bread, the Bible. For May 27th, 2023, here you will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, the Bread of Life, with the goal of hearing all of the Bible by the end of December 2023, increasing our faith and pleasing the Heavenly Father. For the book of Hebrews 11.6 reads, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 17 reads, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And the book of Luke chapter 11 verse 28, But he said more than that, Blessed are those who hear the word of God, and keep it. Hallelujah. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 7 reads, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. And the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 30 reads, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. 2 Corinthians Chapter 5, verse 7 reads, For we walk by faith and not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. Hallelujah. Amen. And so the words of life that we shall hear today are Psalm 144, Proverb 27, because it's the 27th day of the month, and there are 31 Proverbs. The New Testament reading will be from the book of Mark, chapter 6, verse 1 through 56, and the Old Testament reading will be from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 1 through chapter 4, verse 12. All scriptures are taken from the New King James Version of the Bible, copyright 1982, by Thomas Nelson, Incorporated used by permission, all rights reserved. And now, Psalm 144, and it reads, Bless be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. My loving kindness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and the one in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. Lord, what is man that you take knowledge of him, or the son of man that you are mindful of him? Man is like a breath, his days are like a passing shadow. Bow down your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains and they shall smoke. Flash forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out your arrows and destroy them. Verse 7. Stretch out your hand from above. Rescue me and deliver me out of great waters. From the hand of foreigners, whose mouth speaks lying words, and whose right hand is, right, is a right hand of falsehood. Verse 9. I will sing a new song to you, O God. On a harp of ten strings I will sing praises to you. The one who gives salvation to kings, who delivers David, his servant, from the deadly sword. Verse 11. Rescue me and deliver me from the hand of foreigners, whose mouth speaks lying words, and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Verse 12. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as pillars, sculptured in palace style that our barns may be full, supplying all kinds of produce, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our fields. Verse 14, that our oxen may be well laden, that there be no breaking in or going out, that there be no outcry in our streets. Verse 15 and last, happy are the people who are in such a state. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Amen. And the, this word is already blessed as we pray in Jesus' name is every era. And now, Proverb 27. And it reads, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. 
Let another man praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. A stone is heavy and sand is weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than both of them. Wrath is cruel and anger a torrent, but who is able to stand before jealousy? Open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Verse 7. A satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb, but to a hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet. Like a bird that wanders from its nest is a man who wanders from his place. Ornament and perfume delight the heart, and the sweetness of a man's friend gives delight by hearty counsel. Verse 10. Do not forsake your own friend or your father's friend, nor go to your brother's house in the day of your calamity. Better is a neighbor nearby than a brother far away. My son, be wise and make my heart glad, that I may answer him who reproaches me. A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself. The simple pass on and are punished. Take the garment of him who is surety for a stranger, and hold it in pledge when he is surety for a seductress. He who blesses his friend with a loud voice, rising early in the morning, it will be counted as a curse to him. A continual dripping on a very rainy day, and a contentious woman are alike. Whoever restrains her restrains the wind, and grasps oil with his right hand. Verse 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Whoever keeps the fig tree will eat its fruit, so he who waits on his master will be honored. As in water face reflects face, so a man's heart reveals the man. Verse 20. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of a man are never satisfied. The refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, and a man is valued by what others say of him. Verse 22. Though you grind a fool in a mortar with a pistol along with crushed grain, yet his foolishness will not depart from him. Verse 23. Be diligent to know the state of your flocks, and attend to your herds. For riches are not forever, nor does a crown endure to all generations. When the hay is removed, and the tender grass shows itself, and the herbs of the mountain are gathered, gathered in, the lambs will provide your clothing, and the goats the price of a field. Verse 27. You shall have enough goat's milk for your food, for the food of your household, and the nourishment of your maidservants. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in Jesus' name is every hero. Hallelujah. And now the New Testament reading today, chapter 6 of the book of Mark. And it reads... Then he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Verse 3. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he could do no mighty works there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit, teaching. Verse 7. And he called the twelve to himself and began to send them out two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits. He commanded them to take nothing for the journey except the staff, no bag, no bread, no copper in their money belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. Verse 10. And he said to them, In whatever place you enter a house, stay there till you depart from that place. Verse 11. And whoever will not receive you, do not nor hear you, 
When you depart from there, shake off the dust under your feet as a testimony against them. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be better, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Verse 12. So they went out and preached the, that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. Verse 14. Now King Herod heard of him, for his name had become well known. And he said, John the Baptist is risen from the dead, and therefore these powers are at work in him. Others said, It is Elijah, and others said, It is the prophet, or like one of the prophets. But when Herod heard, he said, This is John, whom I beheaded. He has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had sent and laid hold of John, and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. 18. Before John had said to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Therefore Herodias held it against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. Verse 20. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just and holy man, and he protected him. And when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. Verse 21. Then an opportune day came when Herod on his birthday gave a feast for his nobles, the high officials and the chief men of Galilee. And Herodias' daughter herself came in and danced, and pleased Herod and those who sat with him. The king said to the girl, Ask me whatever you want, and I will give it to you. He also swore to her, Whatever you ask, I will give you up to half of my kingdom. So she went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. Verse 25. Immediately she came in with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry. Yet, because of the oaths and because of those who sat with him, he did not want to refuse her. Verse 27. Immediately the king set an executioner and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came and took away his corpse and laid it in a tomb. Verse 30. Then the apostles gathered, gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, Come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. Verse 32. So they departed to a deserted place in the boat by themselves. But the multitude saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran there on foot before all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude, and was moved with compassion for them, because they were like sheep not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. Verse 35. When the day was now far spent, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and already the hour is late. Send them away, that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. Verse 37. But he answered and said to them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? But he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them to make them all sit down in groups on the green grass. So they th sat down in ranks, in hundreds and in fifties. Verse 41. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fish he divided among them all. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of fragments and of the fish. Now those who had eaten their loaves were about five thousand men. Verse 45. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, where he sent the multitudes, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. Verse 47. Now when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. Then he saw them straining at growing, for the wind was against them. 
Now about the fourth watch of the night he came to them walking on the sea, and would have passed them by. 49. And when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost, and cried out. For they all saw him, and were troubled. But immediately he talked with them, and said to them, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. Verse 51. Then he went up into the boat to them, and the wind ceased, and they were greatly amazed in themselves, beyond measure, and marveled. For they had not understood about the loaves, because their heart was hardened. 53. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gesenat, Denisharet, and anchored there. And when they came out of the boat, immediately the people recognized him. 55. Ran through that whole surrounding region and began to carry about on beds those who were sick to wherever they heard he was. Verse 56 and last. Wherever he entered into villages, cities, or the country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might just touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched him were made well. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in Jesus' name is every hearer. Hallelujah and glory to God in the highest. And now the Old Testament reading. Continuing today, beginning today actually, with the book of Second Samuel. Second Samuel, and by way of introduction. The book of Second Samuel records the highlights of David's reign, first over the territory of Judah and finally over the entire nation of Israel. It traces the ascension of David to the throne, his climatic sins of adultery, murder, and the shattering consequences of those sins upon his family and the nation. Amen. And now, Second Samuel chapter 1, and it reads, Now it came to pass, after the death of Samuel, when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had stayed two days in Ziklag, on the third day, behold, it happened that a man came from Saul's camp, with his clothes torn and dust on his head. So it was, when he came to David, that he fell to the ground and prostrated himself. And David said to him, Where have you come from? So he said to him, I have escaped from the camp of Israel. Then David said to him, How did the matter go? Please tell me. And he answered, The people have fled from the battle. Many of the people are fallen and dead, and Saul and Jonathan his son are dead also. So David said to the young man who told him, How do you know that Saul and Jonathan his son are dead? Verse 6, Then the young man who told him said, As I happened by chance to be on Mount Geboa, there was Saul leaning on his spear, and indeed the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. Verse 7. Now when he looked behind him, he saw me and called to me. And I answered, Here am I. And he said to me, Who are you? So I said, answered him, I am an Amalekite. 9. He said to me again, Please stand over me and kill me, for anguish has come upon me. But my life still remains in me. 10. So I stood over him and killed him, because I was sure that he could not live after he had fallen. And I took the crown that was on his head and the bracelet that was on his arm, and have brought them here to my Lord. Verse 11. Therefore David took hold of his own clothes and tore them, and so did all the men who were with him. And they mounted, and they mourned, and wept, and fasted until evening for Saul and for Jonathan his son, for the people of the Lord, and for the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. Verse 13. Then David said to the young man who told him, Where are you from? And he answered, I am the son of an alien, an Amalekite. So David said to him, How was it you were not afraid to put forth your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? Then David called one of the young men and said, Go near and execute him. And he struck him so that he died. Verse 16, So David said to him, Your blood is on your own head, for your own mouth has testified against you, saying, I have killed the Lord's anointed. Verse 17, Then David lamented with his lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son. And he told them to teach the children of Judah the song of the bow. Indeed it is written in the book of Jaser. 
the beauty of Israel slain on your high places, how the mighty have fallen. Tell it in Gath, proclaim it in the streets of Ashkelon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. Verse 21, O mountains of Geboah, let there be no dew, nor rain upon you, nor fields of offering, for the shield of the mighty is cast away there, the shield of Saul not anointed with oil, with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, and the sword of Saul did not return empty. Saul and Jonathan were beloved and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were mightier than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet with luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How mighty, how the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan was slain in your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. You have been very pleasant to me. Your love to me was wonderful, surpassing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war perished. Chapter 2 it happened after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said to him, Go up. David said, Where shall I go up? And he said, To Hebron. So David went up there, went up there, and his two wives also, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David brought up the men who were with him, every man with his household. So they dwelt in the city of Hebron. Then the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, The men of Jabesh-Gilead were the ones who buried Saul. Saul. So David sent messengers to the men of Jabesh-Gilead, and said to them, You are blessed of the Lord, for you have shown this kindness to your Lord, to Saul, and have buried him. Verse 6, And now may the Lord show kindness and truth to you. I also will repay you this kindness, because you have done this thing. Verse 7. Now therefore let your hands be strengthened and be valiant, for your master Saul is dead, and also the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. But Abner, the son of Ner, commander of Saul's army, took Ishbaleth, Ishb Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and brought him over to Manahim. And he made him king over Gilead, and over the Asherites, over Jezreel, over Ephraim, over Benjamin, and over all Israel. Ishbosheth, Saul's son, was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and he reigned two years. Only the house of Judah followed David. And the time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. Verse 12. Now Abner the son of Ner and the servants of Ishbosheth the son of Saul, went out from Menahim to Gibeon. And Joab, the son of Zeruah, and the servants of David, went out and met them by the pool of Gibeon. So they sat down, one on one side of the pool, and the other on the other side of the pool. Verse 14. Then Abner said to Joab, Let the young men now arise and compete before us. And Joab said, Let them arise. So they arose and went over by number twelve from Benjamin, followers of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and twelve from the servants of David. And each one grasped his opponent by the head, and thrust his sword in his opponent's side. So they fell down together. Then that place was called the Field of Sharp Swords, which is in Gibeon. So there was a very fierce, fierce battle that day, and Abner and the men of Israel were beaten before the servants of David. Verse 18. Now the three sons of Zeruah were there, Joab, and Abishai, and Asherel. And Asherel, Asherel was as fleet of foot as a wild gazelle. So Asherel pursued after Abner, and in going he did not turn to the right hand or the left from following Abner. Verse 20. Then Abner looked behind him and said, Are you Asherel? And he answered, I am. And Abner said to him, Turn aside to your right hand or to your left, and lay hold on one of the young men, and take his armor for yourself. But Asherhel would not turn aside from following him. So Abner said again to Asherhel, Turn aside from following me. Why should I strike you to the ground? How then could I face your brother Joab? However, he refused to turn aside. Therefore Abner struck him in the stomach with the blunt end of the spear so that the spear came out of his back, and he fell down there and died on the spot. So it was.
so it was that as the spirit came, as that as many as came to the place where Ashel fell down and died, stood still. Joab and Abishai also pursued Abner, and the sun was going down when they came to the hill of Amma, which is before Gea, by the road of the wilderness Gibeon. Now the children of Benjamin gathered together behind Abner, and became a unit, and took their stand on top of a hill. Verse 26. Then Abner called to Joab and said, Shall the sword devour forever? Do you not know that it will be bitter in the latter end? How long will it be then until you tell the people to return from pursuing their brethren? And Joab said, As God lives, unless you had spoken, surely then by morning all the people would have given up pursuing their brethren. So Joab blew a trumpet, and all the people stood still and did not pursue Israel any more nor did they fight any more. Then Abner and his men went out all that night through the plain, crossed over the Jordan, and went through all Bithron, and they came to Manam. Verse 30, So Joab returned from pursuing Abner, and when he had gathered all the people together, there were missing of David's servants, nineteen men, and Asherah. But the servants of David had struck down of Benjamin and Abner's men three hundred and sixty men who died. Verse 32, and last. Then they took up Asherah and buried him in his father's tomb, which was in, Benjamin, in Bethlehem. And Joab and his men went all night, and they came to Hebron at daybreak. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in Jesus' name, is every hero. And the book of Psalm. 107 verse 20 reads he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions amen and the book of isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 and 6 read but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed verse 6 all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned every one to his own way and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all and let us pray Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, King of glory, almighty Jehovah, our Lord and Savior and King. Heavenly Father, we come before you to say thank you that you have laid on our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, the iniquity of us all. Everywhere, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, that we have turned to our own way, away from your way, your truth, and your life, your light. We ask forgiveness by the blood of the wounds, the bruises, the chastisement, and the stripes of your Holy Son, Jesus. Have mercy on us, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness by the wounds, bruises, chastisement, and stripes of your, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, let us be healed by those stripes. Every sick thing in us, bow before the stripes, wounds, bruises, and chastisement of Jesus Christ, the name that is above every name. We are healed in Jesus' name by your stripes, Father. Thank you for that healing in our bodies, in our spirits, in our families, our marriages, over the work of our hands, over our storehouses, over the ministry, that work you sent us to do from the foundation of the world. Father, thank you that we are healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. In Jesus' name.